Okay. Okay, so I just want to go over a couple things about uh, drought in our um, stuff from this week. So uh, uh, here is um, a nice breakdown, I think. So this is this is one of your readings, a very short reading. Let's see if I can make this guy here. This is one of our readings from uh, the Public Policy Institute of California as just sort of essentially a, a an introduction to the water situation. Um, and while things vary from year to year, roughly we're talking about 50% um, uh, of our, um, uh, what is it? 50% of our water goes to quote unquote, envir the environmental sector, fish, trees, grass, essentially all the rest of the biosphere outside of us. Um, Dr. Ray. Yo. Are we supposed to see this? Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> sorry. No, it's good. You guys got to whack me on the head. I'm sorry. I thought you guys could. I thought this was. I didn't want you to get through that. No, no, no. It's all good. Okay. You guys can see it now? Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. Excellent. So um, uh, basically 50% of our water um, is on a, any given year is typically going to nature. Uh, 40% is going to go to agriculture, and about 10% is going to go to everything else, industry and, and residential and school and, and everything else. And we can see how that distribution uh, plays out in this little map right here, which maybe I can make it a little bit bigger for you guys, a little bit bigger. Right, so um, most of the environmental flows are in the wettest part of the state, right? Which makes sense. Uh, in the wettest part of the state, those critters need more water, right? It's that they've evolved with more moist conditions, more um, humid conditions, etc. Down here in the desert, while critters obviously and plants still need water, not maybe as water uh, craving as in is in the north. And so, as again, as we can start up here and then migrate down south, we see the production, which is mostly up here, um, begin to give way, and the consumption uh, mostly down here. Um, the middle of the state, the Central Valley, is obviously the um, agricultural uh, belt, uh, by and large. And we, uh, over here, are primarily urbanized here on the south coast, so basically Santa Barbara to San Diego. And so you can see that reflected in our consumption patterns um, across the state. Let's see. Next, I want to show you guys. It's not working all right here. Okay. Um, so I have a couple uh, example uh, newscast, not newscast, but just like you know, a couple minutes of the news to, to see how people are talking about drought and and weather and climate and all that good stuff. Um, let's look at this bad boy and this bad boy. Um, okay, so this week we're doing something a little bit different. So you guys have you guys have two. Uh, other than do the readings and the quiz and all that kind of good stuff, um, you have two basic assignments. One is uh, we need, we're going to start talking about our um, case studies. So remember, if you recall, we're going to start doing um, profiles of uh, earthquakes or wildfires, whichever ones you guys are interested in. And so to start with, I want you guys to, to vote as to what topics you're most interested in, and then I'll pull those together and I'll, I'll start to assign people next week and we can, we'll talk about that. So, so I want to hear what, what the type of disasters you're most interested in focusing on for that. And then for our data assignment, we're doing something a little bit different. We're not focusing on generating graphs this week. This week, we're looking at, um, uh, uh, interpreting data and looking at larger swaths. So what I've given you is I've given you a list of different um, publicly available data sets that speak to drought and drought monitoring. So we have the U.S. Drought Monitor, and then we have uh, some uh, the conditions here in our reservoirs in the state. We have uh, some different measures of the rainfall in the different regions of the Sierra Nevadas. Um, we have a measure of how wet, how, how much uh, 
water is being um, held in the snowpack. And then uh, something that's just going to show us the, the general urban use of water. Um, urban use is um, potentially something we can more easily uh, uh, dial up and dial down in terms of water. Uh, so while it is true that, that um, agriculture in California is the greatest consumer of water in the state, right? So it's about, it consumes water at a rate of about four times the water consumption of industry and residential. But because people are growing lettuce, they can't necessarily just take a pause on that, right? Because um, if you're growing lettuce, you need that water on the lettuce or you're not gonna, or the lettuce is gonna die and you're just not gonna do it, right? Which in an extreme drought, sometimes it has to happen, but it's, it, it's, it can be harder to do that. Whereas if we hit a, a, a drought period, um, the thinking goes potentially that um, the, the urban use can be more easily tweaked down a little bit or, or the demand can be uh, lessened a bit um, uh, relatively uh, easier compared to some of these other sectors. So well, uh, I wanna just talk real briefly. So the most important, I mean, there's, these are all important. So what you guys can do is you're gonna, you're gonna look at all these and you guys are gonna uh, play around with this for a bit. I want you to look at these different metrics and then you're gonna do an assessment for me. So you're just gonna do a very simple one, two paragraphs, one paragraph about California overall, and one paragraph about Ventura County. And the question is just simply, how's our water supply? How's our, how's our, what are our drought conditions like in the state as a whole and in Ventura County where campus lies? And so to, to do that, you're first gonna go and, and look at these different um, data sets play around with them, have a look, see what they're showing right now this week. And, um, and then after you've looked through them all, then you can start to make your, your thesis statement and you can start to pull out some facts and numbers to support whatever your, your thesis is. And so you're gonna write two paragraphs and you're gonna submit that as a PDF. And so let's have a look at the drought monitor first. So this is the US drought monitor. Um, you can you can look at the whole U.S. if you want. You can look at regions of the country, etc. What we have here in the drought, and this is for um, this is it's updated weekly, and so this is um, uh, uh, for uh, last week. And what you see here is uh, everything is broken down into a, a couple different levels. Uh, if it is um, clear nothing's going on. And then as we start to get hotter and hotter, we get more uh, intense drought. And so um, the, the darkest dark, whatever that is, rust brown, um, is exceptional drought. And what we see here right now, and so again, this, this, is, this is a relative, this isn't absolute amount of rainfall, okay? This is relative to what the rainfall historically is in these areas, right? So for example, out here in the, in the Mojave and the, in the, the, the dry deserts, um, there's gonna be a different criteria than up here in, or a different quantity will trigger um, say a D1 or a D2 or a D3 relative to the uh, very, comparatively very wet um, Northern uh, California areas, okay? So this is relative to the particular climate in these various areas. Um, and so what we see here is we can see the geography showing up, right? So we see some bands along the coast, right? So we have our coast ranges. We see some other bands maybe associated with the Sierras or things of that nature, valleys, et cetera. And, um, and you are more than welcome to play, play around this as much as you like. You can look at other dates if you wanna look at what trajectory we've been on. You can look at, uh, you know, previous weeks, you can look at previous months, et cetera. Um, you can uh, download different versions of this map right here. You can uh, also, oops, sorry. You can also download uh, the raw data here. You can, um, uh, you can export it as a CSV or an, an Excel file. You can uh, change the summary statistics, et cetera. So pretty much everything here is downloadable and manipulatable. Um, but, uh, and you're welcome to do that, but you do not have to do any, any fancy 
graphing if you don't want to. This is rather, let's look at this line of evidence, what's going on with the state as a whole, what's going on with the Ventura as a whole. And note on these interactive figures, um, if I, if I um, uh, click on them, usually, maybe I don't have my pop-up turned on, but usually you can get additional data when you hover uh, and click on the various counties. And it'll give you usually the summary statistics um, of those counties. Okay, cool. So this is the U.S. Drought Monitor. This is compiled by uh, NOAA, the Na National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which is part of the Department of Commerce. Why is NOAA the Department of Commerce? Well, because uh, when we were creating our um, modern structure for these different agencies, the idea was, oh my God, weather is super important to crops, weather is super important to farmers, weather is super important to transportation. So therefore we're gonna put this agency, which one of its main things it does is monitor the weather, predict the weather, uh, you know, document weather conditions, climate conditions. We're gonna put this in the Department of Commerce. Okay, and then we have um, reservoir conditions. So now this is this uh, output here is a static um, figure. It's a PDF, but it's going to be updated. Um, uh, this one was updated last night. Is that last, last night? Yeah, last night. Um, and so this will be up. If you look at this tomorrow, it'll be slightly different. If you look at the next day, it'll be slightly different. And so this is a measure of all of our water, large water holding facilities in the state water project. Right? Boom, boom, boom. Those are these black. Uh, locations. And then this is showing us how much water is currently in that uh, reservoir behind that dam. And the red is the historical average. So again, we, we were talking about averages again, but this is the historical level that we can use as at least a rough judge as are we in a wet condition? Are we in a dry condition? Um, okay. And so that's that. Um, and then, if, and then we have three different examples of the um, precipitation. Same thing. So this is also going to be a static PDF, but this static PDF is being updated every day. And so, uh, for okay, so we have three different regions. We have a, a northern region. We have a region down around here, and then we have a region down here in the not exactly south, but sort of the southern part of um, the Sierra Nevadas, at least um, in terms of our water generating. Um, um, snow pack. Um, and what we're looking at here is a cumulative accumulation over the year, over the, and so our, uh, that's one thing I didn't mention to you guys. I apologize. Water year. So water year is not a calendar year. So a calendar year would start on January 1 and go all the way to the end of December, right? A fiscal year will start at different times, depending on the company. In the case of CSUCI, um, we start uh, uh, July 1 is our fiscal year. So our fiscal year goes from July to June. In the case of hydrological data, we talk about water years and, or a water year, and that starts on October 1st of each year. In California, we have a rule of thumb that historically has been applied, which is um, we must have everything taken care of in terms of so let's say we're building a house or let's say we're working on a highway and we're doing a bunch of construction. Um, come October 15th, we need to make sure that we have all of our jute netting. We need to make sure that we have all our erosion control practices deployed because the rule of thumb is that after October 15th, we might start getting rain events in California. So this rule of thumb was developed in the wetter time uh, of, of our state. Um, now, as you, as you guys can attest, we have very little rain in October. And unfortunately, in the last couple of years, very little rain in November. And really, it takes until December or Christmas slash New Year's for us to get the, our first sort of robust rain event of the year. Um, in any event, we use October 1 as the start of the water year. So what you'll see in this figure is these are, these are you know, running, or running accumulations or running sums. So we're adding it. So as it rains on this day here, it's going to go up and then it's going to stay constant. It's going to go up, then it didn't rain, so it stayed constant. Then it goes up, it stays constant. Then it goes up and stays constant. And so um, uh, 
and, and for comparison here, we have different years superimposed, different recent years superimposed on this. And then we have the long-term average, which is this light blue thing. Again, problem with averages, right? Don't forget that problem with averages, but um, uh, it gives you at least a vague sense of where we are in terms of um, rainfall, et cetera. Excuse me. And remember, this northernmost part of the Sierras, that's going to be the most important part because that's going to be the wettest part um, in terms of supplying water to the rest of the state. Any questions about these things so far? Nope. Okay, then we have uh, snow water content. And so uh, uh, this is, uh, those, those last couple were, were static PDFs. This is a dynamic um, interface. So you can, you can uh, modify and change these things and you'll get uh, real-time uh, changes in terms of comparison, et cetera. Um, again, here's the three areas of the Sierras. So then that northernmost part, sort of the, the central part, and then the um, more southerly uh, part of the, uh, this, isn't, this isn't the southern Sierras, but this is the, the southern part of our um, snow accumulating Sierras that we use for our water supply. And I think, oh, there's one more, I think. Yeah, okay. And the last one I have for you guys to look at is this bad boy. Okay, so this is the urban water use. So you can zoom in. So this is like some of our Esri products, but you don't have to log in to, to see it. And this is generated with OpenStreetMap and Leaflet rather than um, uh, Esri. But, um, but as, as we look at this, we can see, so here you guys, you guys were just making some figures. And so here we go, we're, we're showing multiple things here. So um, uh, obviously in, in space and time, in, in space, we're showing the location of what we're talking about. The color, right? The color is referencing the per capita um, uh, water consumption. And then the size of the circle is the total amount of consumption. And you can, you can adjust all these, you can, you can change these. Um, uh, values and symbols and all that kind of stuff and play around with it. And again, the idea here is to get a sense of how we're doing in terms of, and, and I'm sorry, and so this this is um, uh, not, so the most recent data we have here is a couple months old, um, and but you can step back in time and look at the trajectory. So you can look at a typical, well, typical, we're in a pandemic, but you can look at, at other uh, Februaries, for example, and see what you know, how does that play out? You can look at other Julys and see how those Julys play out. <sighs> Excuse me. Cool. Make sense? Yeah. Questions? No questions. All right, cool. Um, okay, so you guys are going to do, uh, so you're going to play around with this, knock around, look and see uh, what the patterns are statewide and then uh, county of Ventura. Cool.